was beautiful. Of course, you can't beat Hillsong, right? <laughs> I have a personal connection there, but their music is just really anointed with God's Spirit. So that was just beautiful. Just to bring us all together, we have been um, traveling back to the beginning for these past couple months, looking at the book of Genesis and God's creation, and now we're going to do a little beginnings again in terms of the life and ministry of Jesus, coming back to the beginning of his ministry of calling people and I think it's appropriate today to be in this text because it's the beginning of the story of the worldwide fishing expedition that has brought people I mean when you stop and think about it from this one man the son of God and now millions of followers around the whole world uh, this is an amazing story and this is how it began of course, we're going to save Christmas for Christmas because that's the real beginning, beginning. But we're going to begin hearing more about the Jesus mission. What was his mission and purpose and how are we called to be about his business? So we're going to hear first from today, Luke chapter 5. To give you an introduction of what has come before in the story, Jesus has come from his 40 days in the wilderness being tempted and being in prayer about God's mission for him. He's been rejected and kicked out of his home church because they didn't like his preaching. And he's begun healing and teaching people out in towns, just at the seaside or on a hillside or wherever, and drawing a lot of crowds. And Simon Peter has already heard him speak and invited him home for dinner after the uh, Sabbath worship. And Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law. This is all the backstory of what's about to come as we hear the word for today. Listen for God's word. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, which is also called the Sea of Galilee, you've probably heard that, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there on the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the huge catch of fish they had taken. So also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word and for your living presence among us. And we ask you today to speak to us the word from this gospel story that is meant for each one of us so that we might live it out in our lives for your sake. Amen. I don't know about you, we could probably spend an hour seeing what words really jumped out at you. Anybody have a word that you've really heard? Just speak it out loud right now. Catch people. What else? I heard worked all night, you know? 
There's so many good words. Sometimes take this home and just read through it and see see the words that come out. I'm not going to make you keep uh, discussing, but it's it's fun to do that. And as I thought about this story, I wondered if any of you have ever worked a night shift. Yeah? At home or at a workplace. I mean, all the mothers here have worked a night shift. Well, as a nurse, I had to do it now and then, and I really hated the night shift. And when 7 o'clock came, I was so glad to see the next staff coming in to sit down, finish my charts, give a report, and go home, because I just wanted to go home and lay down and sleep. And once or twice, my wonderful head nurse, Gloria, would come up and say, so-and-so called in sick. Could you please work a double shift? And wow, you had to dig really deep to say, mm. you had to have that passion, the love for the children on the pediatric ward and for your other staff members who would be short-staffed without you to say, okay, I'll do it for you. And I had to do that a few times, and that was not easy. But here is Peter and his friends in the fishing business wrapping up a bad night of fishing. They have caught nothing, they're bone tired, and they're also really discouraged because their labor was so fruitless. They just want to go home and sleep. They've already washed out their nets and done all the closed down work. And then Jesus says, hey guys, let down your nets for a catch. Come on, let's go out to the deep water. Let's just go out a ways. They do not want to do this. But what happens? What would you do if Jesus showed up unexpectedly in your workplace and said, Come on, let's go. It sounds pretty crazy. But Peter knows something about this man. He's like, God knows how tired I am. But if you say so... I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll try one more time. And this becomes the turning point in Peter's life. Because even though he didn't want to do it and he was so tired of fishing, he said yes. He said yes to God's call. And that opened up the amazing experiences that he would have over the next three years following Jesus. I can vouch for this. When you say yes to God, especially when it sounds really crazy and something that you know you cannot do, amazing things will happen. Was it crazy to adopt a 10-year-old orphan who couldn't speak English when I was eight months pregnant? Yes, my family all told me that. But God said, do it. And we did. And now we have the beautiful story of our daughter Sandy and her family and the wonderful way she's blessing the world. And was it crazy to take our 2-year-old, 7-year-old, and 13-year-old girls and Paul, who was an insulin-dependent diabetic, and get on a plane and fly off to live in Kenya for three years? My dad told us that was definitely crazy and we shouldn't do it. But, you know, God had called us to do this, and I can't even imagine missing knowing the beautiful people of that place and how they blessed us. You don't have to go very far to find something that God's calling you to. That maybe you want to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and you'll be blessed because he's walking with you. Peter's life has totally changed. It scared him so much to be with this really powerful holy man that he just said, Jesus, you better get away from me. You know, I'm not good enough for you. And Jesus said, no, don't be afraid because we're going to be partners. I'm going to be walking right beside you. And I think this story is about partnerships. Do you notice several times throughout the story, there's not just one boat, there's two. Peter's not alone. He has partners. And then Jesus says, come on, we're going to be fishing for people. I'm with you. We're, we're in a partnership here. Jesus could have commanded the fish to just jump into the boat, right? Like he could command the wind and the waves and all that. He could have just said, oh, these guys are tired. They need something. Just start the fish jumping in there. But he didn't do it that way. 
He required them to have a response, to put something into it, to be involved and active in the ministry that would lead to this abundance of God's blessing. He doesn't want spectators who are amazed and like, wow, God's awesome. He wants us to be in the partnership, in the business with him for the kingdom purposes. And I think it's still the same today. Is that hard sometimes? Yes. Some days you just feel really tired and you're like, okay, God, I've been doing this, this, and this. I just can't do it. But when you say yes, if you say so, he's there as your partner. And he gives you the strength and provides all that we need. More and more, even way more than they needed. Can you imagine? This was like enough fish to feed the whole village for a year, you know? This was way beyond anything they could imagine. All it requires is that we're willing. And then Peter, as a leader, he steps up and he says, okay, I'll do it. And do you see how the others follow him? Because when you set an example of trusting God in your life, other people see that and they want to come along. They want to be close to you because you're inspiring them. The other miracle in this story to me is that Peter and his partners have the biggest success of their life and they walk away from it to follow Jesus. You know, they were wealthy men. They had all these fish. They could have been really happy, etc. But they left it because they found the real treasure. And Jesus says to him, don't worry about it because I'm going to repurpose you. You already know how to fish, but now we're going to fish for people. And God has given each of us skills and uh, spiritual gifts and all that we need to join into his purpose, to his mission. We see it right here, all around us. I saw it in a special way, um, probably about 20 years ago now, we were starting a homeless shelter program in Orange and Seminole County for homeless families, called Family Promise now. And it was a big task, and we just looked around and saw all these churches that had buildings and Sunday school rooms and all that and we saw families who had nowhere to live and we're like okay families could live in the church and so together a group of us worked on this and launched the Family Promise Network and my church was in Seminole County and we were the first ones to host but I had to get a lot of volunteers for that so one Sunday I told about the program and the the children that needed help and the families and what they were going through and after the service this lady came up to me and she said I've been in this church for 20 years I left social work to raise my children and I've never done anything like that I've never volunteered for one thing ever before but Jesus touched me today and said you should lead this ministry she was a social worker She had the skills, and God touched her heart. And then another lady who was a a homemaker, who was a grandma, and she came forward and she said, I love my kids and grandkids, and I can love other people's kids too. So they became partners, Sharon and Sally. And they were the, the hub, the leaders who stepped up and said, yes, we'll do this. And people came and helped. And from 90-year-olds who made cookies to ones who spent the night like I did with my kids, it took the whole fishing crew, but we were able to do this. And wow, God blessed us so much. I see this repurposing going on all around our church, don't you? Like people who can cook and have a gift for fixing great meals or feeding people on Thursdays and third Saturday and people who can make pumpkin rolls are turning that into a mission for Jesus. It's awesome. People who have the gift of compassion are visiting others who need it. People with corporate skills are leading in the church visioning team. People with handyman skills And lawn skills are taking care of our property. Jesus is repurposing all of us 
And when you do a task for Him, it becomes a joy. So I invite you to be looking around, seeing where God's children are serving, seeing who you can follow and what part you can play in the story of Jesus' mission. The main thing is to just go to Him in prayer and say to Him, what is it you would have me do? And if you say so, I'm willing. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for gifting us and blessing us, and we thank You for calling us to be part of Your great team, partnered with others all around the world who are caring and loving in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we gather around the table today, Lord, may your spirit be with us. May we feel and connect with the presence of so many of your followers around the world. Give us your strength for Jesus' sake. Amen.